We invite the congregation to follow along on page 268 to the rite of holy baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful, and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. How is this child to be named? Callum Ray, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Callum Ray according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam, and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers, and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Baptismal sponsors. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Callum Ray as sponsors in the Christian faith? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do.
Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Because Callum is not yet able to answer for himself, we will t- all together with parents and sponsors answer on his behalf. Callum Ray, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I do. you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I do. you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. Callum Ray, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I Callum Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. This white garment is revealed to show that Callum has received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Also, receive this light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you, Callum, a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven. In the one holy Christian and apostolic church, we receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Callum Ray the new birth and holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, 
you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace be with you. Amen. In thanksgiving for the Lord's mercy being extended to Callum, the service continues with a joyful song in the intro at Psalm 80, as is printed in the bulletin. Please, Sam.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday in Advent is from Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who fear my name, The sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stole, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and just decrees that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children, and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle is from Romans chapter 15. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. This is the word of the Lord. We stand.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. The powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they come out in leaf, you see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all has taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the whole earth. But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Behold Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of His Father.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear people of God, the day of the Lord is coming. You've been hearing that now for the last three weeks, but today that is the clear and center point of all the scriptures we have heard. In the intro it, Psalm 80 cried out, Behold, your salvation comes. Then, through Malachi the prophet, we were reminded that the day is coming burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says Yahweh Sabaoth. The Apostle Paul wished to encourage the Christians in Rome as they looked forward to Christ's coming that they might endure in hope and give glory to God as they waited. And finally, our Lord Jesus himself exhorts those who will hear him to straighten up and raise up their heads for their redemption is drawing near. The day of the Lord is coming, dear saints. And the Lord wishes for you to be ready. It used to be that nearly everyone alive was very aware that the Lord would return. That this world in which we live would one day be brought to an end. And that the end would also mean the day of judgment. We see this in how Jesus begins the Holy Gospel. The very first paragraph. When he speaks of the signs in sun and moon and stars, and the distress of nations in despair at the disasters that occur upon the world, he does not speak of people being unaware that the end is coming. Rather, what he notes is that the people are very much aware, but they have the wrong idea of what that day will bring for them. To say this another way, when Jesus is speaking about the last day, he is speaking about a reality which his audience is very well aware of. There is no false idea in their minds that this world is all there is, or that it will simply go on existing forever. Rather, the people to whom Jesus is speaking are a people who can see the signs. They see the destruction. They are living in the disasters. And they are very well aware that these signs signal that the end is coming. What they get wrong is that they expect that day to be a day they need to fear. Now remember, at this point in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus is no longer speaking to his opponents, the Pharisees who reject him. That's why he's not speaking a word of rebuke. No, he's giving a final sermon, probably in the temple, to those who are his disciples. And he's speaking of the last day, which will be a burning hot day of wrath for those who have rejected him and led others to reject him by their open speaking against him. But for those who have reverently called him teacher, for those who sit at his feet hearing his words, look closely at the text. He does not at all describe that day as a day which should produce fear, foreboding, or any kind of terror. Rather, he tells his disciples that when they see the signs of the last day and are put in mind that that day is surely drawing near, they are to straighten up, to lift up their heads for their redemption, their rescuing is what he is bringing. Isn't that remarkable? I mean, to those who are very well aware that there will be an end to this earthly life, and to those who have been called and gathered to be faithful hearers of his word, 
Jesus speaks words of comfort that are meant to encourage them not to be afraid when they see great and terrible calamity coming upon the earth. Rather, they are to see that calamity as a sign that the day they will be rescued from the perils of this world is surely coming soon. (coughs) To those who believe, to those who are His disciples, that is what Jesus intends to bring for them on the day that He comes. That's not news that terrifies. That's good news, which is given by the Lord to those who will hear Him in order to comfort them as they bear the burden of living in catastrophe. As they are in the midst of enduring great suffering, the Lord Jesus speaks to them in order to encourage them that this will all be brought to an end on the day of the coming of the Son of Man. It's the day of their redemption, which is their deliverance. On that day, it will all be finally realized. Dear people of God, those words are still very much needed to be heard. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have visited with a dear child of God on his or her deathbed. One who was baptized and believed the gospel, but who still thought of the day of Jesus' return to be a day that he or she ought to fear. But isn't that the very heart of the gospel? And isn't that the entire purpose for which the Father sent the Son so that sinners would not perish but be given eternal life? And eternal life in the new creation with the new heavens and a new earth in which we will feast in season and out with resurrected body loving one another perfectly and giving glory to our Savior with one heavenly voice is what Jesus will usher in when He comes on the last day. There is no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus. The wrath of God is satisfied by the suffering and death of Jesus, God's own Son. So that for all who believe in Him, all who hear His Word and keep it, The last day is nothing but a blessing and joy and the day which Christians are able to look forward to with eager expectation and without even a little bit of fear. And guess what? It isn't arrogance or pride. It's faith in the Word of Christ For this is exactly what Christ Himself has promised. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him the world would be saved and spared from the wrath that is to come. You see, Jesus' words about what will happen for the faithful on the day of His return are words that we joyfully proclaim to you this very day, even as you yourselves are those who are gathered together at His feet to hear His Word. This is one of the reasons we rejoice so greatly at the promise of God given in holy baptism. Sure, The Lord can give and create faith in the heart of anyone through His Word as the Spirit wills. But what the Lord has promised and what He Himself has made explicitly clear is that the Word of God given in holy baptism is a word of promise which declares the baptized to be God's own dear child and an heir of all the blessings of heaven. The Word of God declares that holy baptism gives forgiveness of sins. 
so that those whose sins are forgiven no longer need to fear the coming of the Lord. Whether they're only a few weeks old like little Callum or in their 90s like some of you, where the Lord Jesus promises that sins are forgiven, the Lord Jesus' promise is there to be believed so that those who believe it no longer live in fear but look forward to the day that they will see their Savior face to face. The Word of God attached to holy baptism also declares the baptized to be those who are rescued from death and the devil. As St. Paul declares, Romans chapter 6, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? We were buried, therefore, with Jesus by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. Do you hear it? This is is the promise of God attached to holy baptism. That those who are baptized are free to believe. No, they are encouraged to believe. Even taught by God the Holy Spirit to believe and be certain that holy baptism rescues them from death and the devil so that they can be certain that eternal life in the resurrection is their promised future. This is what the word and promise of God asserts. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Just as Noah and his family were saved from all evil and even death itself through the waters of the flood, so now the word and the water in holy baptism saves those who are baptized from all their evil enemies of sin death and the devil, which is why St. Peter can say in 1 Peter chapter 3, baptism now saves you. The promise of God given in the word of God to those who will hear God's word and take it to heart is intended by God the Holy Spirit who is sent by the Father and the Son to comfort you and encourage you as you are those who today are enduring trial and temptation and disaster and calamity. Trusting the promise of God to be true isn't arrogant at all. It's simple and humble faith. And from it flows the comfort, joy, hope, and encouragement that the Lord Jesus intends for His faithful disciples to have. Now, I stated earlier that it used to be that nearly everyone alive knew that the day of the Lord, that last day, really was coming. The concern was whether or not they knew the last day to be a day to fear or a day of great joy. For those who will hear them, Jesus' words today settle the question. For those who believe and are baptized, those who hear God's word and keep it, the day of the Lord is to be seen as a day of great joy in the beginning of the new creation which the Lord has promised that His faithful disciples will inherit. But there is one final point that the Lord Jesus makes. And it is one that we need to take to heart still today. While we can be certain that Jesus is our Savior and that we have no more need to fear His coming, we must never forget that He is coming. To His encouragement to straighten up and raise up our heads in anticipation of our redemption, Jesus also adds a final exhortation to watch yourselves and stay awake. 
It can happen that those who no longer fear Christ's coming begin to forget Christ's coming so that they fall in love in this world and begin to live like those who are still of the world. And you tell me, which is the bigger threat today? That people are aware of Christ's return and are afraid that they will receive his judgment because of their sin? Or that people have begun to live as if Christ will never return? Or that there is no judgment for sin? The Lord Jesus desires for you to be ready, to be awake, to be looking for his coming. That's why he came. That's why he was born. That's why he suffered, died, was buried, rose from the dead, and yes, it is also why he will come again. He does not want his coming to fall upon you like a trap. So be a faithful hearer of his word. You who are baptized, also believe. Watch yourself. Stay awake. Hear the word of God and keep it. For the day of the Lord is surely coming. It is closer than ever before. In the name of Jesus. The service continues as we sing together the offertory beginning on page 192. Please stand. the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs, we stand. O Lord God, Heavenly Father, create in us contrite hearts and work in us true repentance and faith. Give ear to our cries for mercy and keep us, your baptized children, clothed in the perfect holiness and righteousness of your Son that we may remain his beautiful and unblemished bride. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all pastors in Christ, that they would preach the gospel in its purity and administer the sacraments according to Christ's institution. Be with all who serve the church and prepare all your baptized children to be faithful confessors of the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy. Fill us, your children, with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may abound in hope. Remove from us all grumbling and coveting, that we would be faithful in our vocations, glad in our daily work, and eager to serve you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. In a world full of conflict and turmoil, remind us that you have given all authority in heaven and on earth to your Son, our ascended Lord Jesus. Call to faithfulness the leaders of the earth and bless those who govern. Thwart those who would hinder your reign among all peoples, that peace may be established in all places. Lord, in your mercy. Be merciful to those in our midst who have been afflicted with pain, sickness, trials, and difficulties, especially those who have requested our prayers, including Olga, Ron, Don, Orlin, Beverly, 
Wayne, Myra, Arlene, Raymond, Wayne, Joanne, and those we name in our hearts. That they may be granted health or strength to endure their afflictions. Help us all to see that when Christ returns in glory, he will make all things new, and even our bodies will be incorruptible and immortal. Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the lives you've already begun to knit together in their mother's wombs, especially those you've given to Eliza, Lauren, Taylor, Tricia, and Caitlin. Prepare both mothers and fathers to be faithful Christian parents who bring their children to the font and teach them always the word of Christ. Bless all families that they might be filled with your word and spirit and so be kept strong in the true faith until life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> you have taught us to straighten up and raise our heads when we see the coming of the Son of Man. Even now, your Son comes to us under the bread and wine in the sacrament of the altar. Grant that all who commune today may receive the very body and blood of Christ for the forgiveness of all their sins and to their abundant blessing. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 